Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda, if this is your first time here. Welcome to my beauty entertainment channel, absolutely. So, if you would like to follow me on social media, here's my Twitter and my Instagram. Go have fun, enjoy yourself on there. And while you're here, go check out some of my recent videos, which should be on your screen now. But, so as you can hopefully tell from the title of today's video, today we're gonna be doing another Everything Wrong With Blank series. So this is the series I started on my channel two years ago now I don't really remember but I talk about television shows that I've seen like multiple 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 times that's why I'm able to like use the title that I use so previously I've done everything wrong with Victorious with iCarly with Glee with America's Next Top Model with Grownish with Dance Moms with Hannah Montana with Euphoria with Grey's Anatomy and most recently with Scandal so in today's video we're gonna be doing I'm very excited this is one of my favorite shows of all time we're gonna be doing an everything wrong with modern family super super excited okay disclaimer I really said I would never do these again I lied the title I I shouldn't have to explain this because we all have critical thinking skills the title is just a title you can watch shows and like them and talk about them. It's TV. It's fiction. They're not real. If I say I don't like this character, I'm not stabbing you in the chest. They're not real. Okay? Also, it's just a title. Everything wrong with it's just a title. I'm just talking about the television show good bad everything in between it's just a title so i don't really know why there's confusion or commotion about that when it's just a title it's literally never been that serious also my disclaimer is especially important for today's video i'm doing my makeup this whole time um because modern family is a comfort show for a lot of people it is mine as well so i'm not attacking you personally when i talk about characters or when i talk about like the show in general and things that could potentially be wrong with the show. I'm not attacking you personally, I'm not attacking your character, I'm not attacking you in your heart, all right? So delete your comment. Perfect. Okay, so today's video, we're gonna talk about everything wrong with Modern Family. I am so excited. Let me tell you my history of Modern Family. So, Modern, I started watching Modern Family, I think when I was 15 or 16. I was in high school. Whenever it was, age really doesn't matter. I started watching when I was in high school and I rewatched it. I watched, I think it was only at season, I don't know what season it was at that point, but I watched the whole thing. And then I started watching it like when it was on the air. And then I got to college and I find, and I hadn't watched it in a while, so I just binged the whole thing. Um, every season that has come out, I just binge the season after it's come out and the show just ended last year and I just watched the 11th season for the first time this past month because every time I started rewatching Modern Family most recently in January, in the new year I was like, I haven't rewatched Modern Family in a while when I was flying back from LA. I was like, let me rewatch it. And since then I have just watched Modern Family on a loop since January. I get to like a point in season 10 and then I start it over again. I get to a point where I'm like, mm, let's start the show again and then I restart the show again. So I think it's fun. I really enjoy the show again. I've been watching it on a loop since January. So we're maybe at like watch 11, watch 12. It's phenomenal background noise. It's phenomenal background noise, yet it's funny enough that you're still gonna laugh even if you're using it as background noise, which is what makes it, in my opinion, so amazing. That's just my honest truth and opinion. That's just my disclaimer. Um, I really like this show. I watch it all the time, so like calm down. All right, so like in most of my everything wrong with, I'm just gonna go like character by character, or in this case like house by house, and then talk about like the show generally speaking and stuff at the very end. So, oh. how cool would it be if you turned into Wonder Woman right now? Can't even talk about it. I'm gonna do my makeup. I don't usually do my makeup in these videos, but I didn't put makeup on before this. So I'm gonna do my makeup in this video. So the first household we're gonna start with is a Tucker Pritchett's. So we're starting off with Mitchell, Cameron, and Lily. So the first character I wanna start off with is, I wanna start off with Lily. I love, obviously, who doesn't like Lily? 
red flat. I love Lily. I think she's a breath of fresh air on the show, especially because I think Lily on the show, this child, is one of the most honest people on this show um, because half of this family drama, especially between her dads, is just them lying to each other, is just them just with lying and or withholding the truth from each other all of the time. So I really appreciate Li Lily's unbridled honesty and dryness. I love it. And they. this is my thing. I think Lily has added, for what she's done with the show and how everyone's character especially your father's feed off of her and her character is necessary for the show to be a thing. The way her character is treated is horrifying. It's horrifying. It's horrifying. And I'm talking about this more a little bit like towards the end, but I'm going to say some of it now because I'm talking about Lily now. Um, it was the butt of the joke for like a couple of episodes how they don't know their daughter. And that never set right with me because I'm like, what is funny about that? Like, what is funny about not knowing your kids? And like, the still not knowing your kids after the episode is over. It's the joke for an episode, two, I think it was three episodes. It's a joke for three episodes. And the conclusion at the end of every episode is, well, we don't really know, need to know that much about her. How? Really? Your daughter? <laughs> your daughter like it's supposed to be funny it was supposed to be funny every single time that either a they didn't know their daughter two they didn't know how to explain basic sexual health or basic health to their daughter they couldn't explain that was supposed to be funny i did not laugh and it happened more than once like it, it was a reoccurring joke that they didn't know about her life and they were like well if it's ain't broke don't fix it and i'm like no it's broken it's broken there it needs to be fixed because it's broken. I don't know what you guys mean. So that was very confusing to me. I don't like the way they treat her character, but um, from what I get of Lily, which is not much because of the way they just act like she doesn't exist except to make a quippy one-liner um, or to make a racist joke at her expense, I really enjoyed her character and I love Lily. So those are my thoughts on Lily. I'll talk about more about that when I get to that part of this video. The next character that I wanted to talk about, I'm talking about all of them, is Mitchell. I am a fan of Mitchell. I'm a big fan of Mitchell, actually, because here, all the reasons I hear people don't like Mitchell. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Wouldn't this family stress you out? Answer the question. Answer the question. Wouldn't this family lead you to having, you know, certain, you know, ticks and certain, you know, things you need to do and, you know, being a little bit uptight? I don't know. I don't know. It would lead me to because this is craziness. So I think we can need to calm down and lay off Mitchell just a little bit. I think it's a little much. And I think it's a little much because we couldn't get other characters on the show without Mitchell being there as a bounce board for their, you know, things to fly off of. And I think Mitchell's funny. You can disagree with me with that. I think Mitchell's hilarious. In, you know, a dry, kind of boring way, it's funny. It doesn't make much sense, but whenever he is supposed to make, he doesn't make me laugh with the jokes he tell. Mitchell just makes me laugh because of his, his the way he looks. <laughs> that sounded cruel. No, it's the way he reacts to things that makes me laugh, which is why I like his character. Wouldn't you be uptight too? I would, which is why I am not gonna harp too much on Mitchell's just, mm -mm, it's too much. I need you to see in this household that appro that reaction is appropriate. That reaction to this family dynamic is a pro uptightness. That's the, that's the only appropriate reaction. So I enjoy Mitchell's character. I think he's so necessary to the show, which is why it angers me whenever people like, I guess like just talk about Cam, but I've learned that people don't like Cam. Oh, that's my next character. So the next character I want to talk about is Cameron, who I also really do like. I have caveats here. Listen, Cameron is ridiculous. Cameron is ridiculous, but Cameron is an absolutely fabulous character. The reason why I say Cameron is ridiculous, why I start off by saying that is, could you imagine meeting someone like that in person? If you've met a white theater kid, you have, but it's super fun, but there's a, there's a, there's a, um, there's a point where you're like, this is enough. This is enough. So Cameron would be really, really fun, you know, to hang out with or whatever in doses. 
it's not an everyday thing. It's not an all the time thing. That's why I don't know how this family survived. But that's with a lot of them. That's with literally not just him. He is a Rachel Berry. You either love his character or hate it. And honestly, he acts like a Rachel Berry, but it makes for excellent television. Just how, just like how Rachel Berry made for excellent television. They're like, they're all, the other one in the show, I think is a really good actor, but Cameron, Cameron and Mitchell together. Cameron. His facial expressions alone can make you lose your mind. If I've watched, I have watched this show so many times and there are some like points where I just watch Cameron's face. As I'm watching the show, I literally just watch in that episode, I just focus in on his face and just, you're laughing the whole time. You're like, you're not paying attention to the dialogue or the plot. I know the plot in my head by now. I just pay attention to him. And the show is just as funny. It's a gift, it really is a gift. <laughs> It's the way he adds onto every line. It's not just saying it, it's the attitude, it's the snark, it's the slightly clumsy yet endearing snarkiness that I love. I think his flair and his drama is so integral to the show. In the same breath, he cannot have his flair and his drama and his over the topness and the Rachel Berry print without Mitchell's dry yet vulnerable snarkiness. That would not, it wouldn't, I, it wouldn't work as well as it does, but I also just think it wouldn't work. Like if Cam was just by himself and there was no Mitchell, or there was just Mitchell and no Cameron, it wouldn't work. It really wouldn't work. Uh, like it, nothing really would make sense. Nothing would make sense. And I don't believe Cameron's jokes would have hit if Mitchell wasn't there as sort of like the oppositional force. I don't think it would have made much sense and I don't think the show would have been funny, uh, like at all. So they work so well together. I like those characters. I like this whole household. I think they're kind of funny. I think, you know, they do a lot of like, um, let's be better than the other parents. And I'm like, well, you're not beating Phil, but you know, maybe in other, in other aspects you can, cause sometimes these other houses be going crazy. But a lot of times they'd be like, let's win against Claire. And I'm like, the woman with control issues, what are you winning against? Who are you winning against? Not her, but I'll get to Claire in a little second. All right. So that is the Tucker Pritchett family. Um, I have to talk about Cam's sister in that. She's not in this. I think she's crazy. I think she's funny though. I think she's a little crazy. Next. Yeah. So walk away, Grandpa. You know what? Ooh. Nobody call him Grandpa. I do. Okay. That's it. No boat. Everybody off my dock, or I'm calling the cops. Wait, wait family we're going to are the proof i got powder everywhere the next family that we're talking about are the pritchetts so the pritchetts manny jay and gloria ah love okay the first character in this family i'm talking about is manny i loved manny's character until season 11 and it's not even his fault because why did you make him do that to Sherry? That was unnecessary. And I know like it's been this whole time that like Manny's like a hopeless romantic and he does like crazy things for girls. But what and really? I didn't like that. At least, you know, it's fine now by the end because I just finished watching it. I finally watched the finale. I've been avoiding it for literally six years. Or it came out last year. So I've been avoiding it for one year. Um, actively avoiding the finale because I don't want the show to end. I enjoy his character. Manny, when he was young, and then he when he, that transition between like a kid and a preteen, that was difficult for a lot of the kids on this show um, to make that transition and to see um, for the show to like develop them into a person for the preteen phase. And again, just not as a vessel. How they did it for Manny is he was really, really snappy. He was snarky. He was sassy. It, he was a smart ass. And it was so funny. He would make like smart alecky comments. And then he just turned into like whatever. Like both him and Alex lost a, for, a whoa, whoa. Okay, whoa. <laughs> lost their like slightly snarky and judgmental attitudes. I don't think we needed them to lose that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't think we needed them to lose them. Like, I don't know how we got from that. Like Manny who was like, like pushing back. Uh, okay, I look crazy. <laughs> who was slightly pushing back against Jay, who was making these little smart alecky, like I'm more cult than you comments making him propose to his girlfriend all ridiculous and then making him super sad. I guess they needed something to do 
in season 11 and ooh, does it kind of make sense yeah possessiveness kind of I just didn't like it that's my final opinion so does it does, did it make sense you know that happening to Manny and him turning into a, like that weepiness proposing to your 20 year old girlfriend in front of your entire family what it makes sense I just didn't like it <laughs> That's my final thought. I just didn't like it. I hated that. I hated that entire thing. I will never rewatch that 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 section of season eleven again, again because that was just horrifying. Or was it the end of season ten as well? Whatever that was, boo, boo. Okay, I need to respond to my mom. One second. Um. First, she's buying me a mirror. Sorry, and I'm not gonna edit this out. I'm gonna forget to. So sorry. Okay, back to me. So like in season five and six, when he was first, you know, the preteen, teenage, not preteen, more like teenager, because he's been reading the whole time. They let him make the jokes. That's when, that's what I liked. That's where my favorite part of Manny's character was. They let him make the jokes. And then as he got older, he became the joke. And I was like, no! Like, we, we were doing so well this whole time. Like, we were doing so this whole time. Sure, they made jokes at his expense earlier, especially, especially Jay. Especially Jay. But it wasn't as much. Then we get into the his whole plot line. Was it season 11? His whole plot line for the first half was him being a joke. He was able to snap it back. Don't worry, he was able to snap it back with ruining Luke's relationship as he should have. As he should what do you mean what do you as he should have as he should have ruined that just dead on rights that was amazing he got it back and now he's back now he's you know back to what he was so I'm glad that didn't turn into a whole season thing or into a whole and yeah keep it short I just didn't enjoy my time while that was happening while the Manny Sherry debacle was happening I was not having a good time watching him on screen because I was like where is the smart ass why, when did why did this happen why did this happen I know why it did but I miss it you know I really personally like how they had him stick with filmmaking even though he several times he had like a bit of like a crisis about like whether he wanted to continue doing it I that's how, like I appreciate the perseverance and something that Manny's had since like episode one is his ability to like he doesn't care what other people think and I think as viewers because he lost it he lost that that ability to not care what other people think he lost that especially when you know the last season happened he did lose that or, or so we thought but I think them keeping him like I don't okay I think them keeping him in the filmmaking even though it was you know it's messy it's not very good is remnant of old Manny. Even though they got rid of a whole lot of things with old Manny, that's still there. His perseverance, I appreciate it. It's like, because like his family, I as a viewer thought he lost it. I'm sure his family, because they talk about how much he lost it because of, you know, the Sherry situation. But despite all that, he stayed with the filmmaking. And even in the, in like, he still was talking about it in the last season. I mean, plus he had a pep talk from Phil and it was, that that really helped him stay, of course, America's greatest father. That's not a hard competition, but, but back to my point, with a pep talk from Phil, he was able to stay. And I really appreciated that because I could have made him like give up on his dream, which they do that. They insinuate that a lot in Modern Family, like giving up what you want to do. Like when Alex was like, I kind of want to sing and Jay was like, do the, do graduate first. And I, even though I agree with that, what that was like, I didn't like the lesson learned from that. I don't always agree with the lesson learned from Modern Family because a lot of them do, are like that. It's like, okay, well, you're suffering, just work. But Modern Family doesn't do the suffer, suffer in sadness in the way that other like American sitcoms promote that, which I'll talk about more with like Phil and Claire, how they like play into that and how their like married relationship is like something we don't see on TV ever. Husband loving his wife and his kids and his job crazy right so i like manny's character did they ruin his character um i don't know about ruining they took him on a little too much of a tumultuous journey for me personally but where the show ended it's fine it's fine i just didn't like that that little in between it was just a season and a half in between of just i didn't just bad 
just started bad, ended bad. But you know, maybe had a bit of, you know, a mid teen crisis. It's all right. It is literally all right, right? Okay, next character is Jay. What do you think I'm gonna say about Jay? Let's, let's use context clues and let's use pattern of behavior. What do you think my opinion on Jay is? Before you start, a modern family, the modern American white Caucasian always family. So there needs to be a J there. I like get that before specific hives comes at me. I know everyone watching the show is supposed to relate to a character as long as you're white, right? Um, so I know why the existence of him has to be here. I understand. What? I don't even want to talk about Jay specifically. I have no real opinions on him. Does he make me laugh? Yes, I'm laughing at him though, absolutely. And sometimes that very, very nasty, crass, not caring about other people's feelings, humor, or like meanness is funny. Not all the time though, because let's just, why are you so evil to, what did Phil do to you? Elope with your daughter? 25 years ago? I'm sorry. I don't know what that's, I don't, I don't understand. I'm not married, I don't have children. I don't get that. You had, she was gonna get married eventually. No? What do you mean? And Phil is not a horrible person. He's not a horrible person. He's, has he done anything wrong in his life? I don't think so. He's supposed to be like, tough. Jay is supposed to be like tough and everything. That's fine with that demographic of boomers. But you guys are literally victims and you just want everyone else to feel the same pain that you felt and the pain that you face. Even e instead of being like, hmm, maybe no one else should have to suffer like I did. Maybe nobody else should have to drive home from Disneyland in order to pay their, in order to, in order to make ends meet and take their family off vacation. Maybe that shouldn't have to happen. Maybe I'm a victim. Maybe my father never showing me affection made me act like this so maybe I should stop the cycle and not treat Mitchell like he's just garbage on the street and I shouldn't continue that cycle into treating my son-in-law like he's literal dirt on the road hmm let's ponder let's ponder because I could spend some time now pondering you want minimum wage to remain the same three pennies and a button because you were overworked and underpaid you don't agree with stimulus checks because the government now it's handouts and this and the thought we I'm sorry you are a victim but it can't happen to me it's just it's very miserable he is so mean to Phil and Phil's one of my favorites so it is a personal attack but I really even if I didn't like Phil I could still fight over him like I'm bringing out the hot Cheeto powder you're done you're done like it's oh what do you what do you mean there is no point to be mean to Phil except to feel a little power in his life but you were the CEO of a very major closet company for the whole first half of the show so what is this real power trip you need to go on if you have it's always greediness we must always take more power we can't ever be happy it's gluttony is that the word is that the seventh sin what glutton it's gluttony right hmm Phil's not good enough for Claire. Are they breaking up anytime soon? Do you see that happening anytime soon? No, so get over it. Well, I don't know why he's putting so much energy into something that won't, they, he stopped, they, he's grown and changed. Has he? We'll see. He's grown and changed. My computer's about to die. I am disorganized today. Oh, I didn't charge it last night. That's why this is happening. Oopsie. And I will not edit any of this out. I will forget to. So. I will forget to. My sincerest apologies to you all. But, but let's get through it. He's putting so much energy into like hating Phil. Like it's going to make Phil go away. Phil's a good man. You think he's going to leave his wife and three kids because this old man, he's being mean to him? No, he's still there. He's going to take it. I think you, I think that freaks you out because you couldn't take it. Even for that one episode where Gloria's mom didn't like him, he couldn't take that. He literally couldn't handle that. He was freaking out about how Gloria's mom didn't like him. Pot, meat, kettle. Pot, meat, kettle. And 
I know, like Gloria's, not Gloria, Jay is supposed to be like your grandpa or what, uh, you have to be white. You have to be white to have that sort of empathy for Jay. I'm sorry, I'm not white, so I don't have it. Um, he's supposed to be like your grandpa or whatever, and he's just, he's just salt of the earth. He's just like that. Like Jay even said that himself in one episode. Um, that flies over Amanda's head. I don't, as part of the price of watching white sitcoms is some things just don't. Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not white salt of the earth he's a bigot so uh, it's over my head jay does make me laugh sometimes if he didn't i'd talk a lot more meanly about him and I, that wasn't me that was me asking why do you act like that it's never necessary for you to act like that it's not necessary for you to be mean to phil what has phil done to you raise your three grandchildren care for your daughter make Mitchell feel like he finally has a brother that he's always wanted and house your great-grandchildren in said home. I don't know what you really want from Phil and he does all this with a smile on his face. I don't know what you want from Phil. Back off, old man. Not that one. Not that one. Those are my thoughts on Dre Jay, but you probably could have figured out my thoughts on Jay before watching this video i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure uh, just okay so that's my thoughts on jay next character is gloria a phenomenal woman a phenomenal a phenomenal woman for so many reasons but a phenomenal woman that she had like the, uh, this show i love i adore this show but it's a lot of bullshit gloria's character even though she never was allowed to be like angry about it had to endure a lot of bullshit i think gloria is hilarious i think gloria is hilarious i think her jokes um, are amazing. I think whenever, whenever Gloria supposed to make you laugh, you laugh. Do you not laugh? Do you not laugh? I don't always laugh for everybody else's jokes. He, he's and hoo is not for them. I do laugh every single time Gloria said something. I think Gloria gives her all to this family and sometimes they act, not sometimes, a lot of times they act like she's overreacting, especially in the first few seasons. The first few seasons had this problem, which is how they treat uh, the whole show. But they would be like, why does she care when we mock her accent? Or like Claire calling her a gold digger and then lying to her face about it and then being like Not saying but insinuating that she was overreacting. You just called her a gold digger and then you called her a gold digger to your 10 year old son and then lied about it and Then are like it's not that big of a deal. What? <laughs> That's crazy I also think Gloria as a character has been able to like be a whole whole person throughout this show that's what i was worried about um that's not worth i've watched the show so many times but like her character not her character in the last seasons now is like a realtor so she has like something for herself but even throughout the show i the first seasons were the worst with like Gloria and Manny and how they treated their characters it did, did it get better throughout the show not really but it got not as horribly awful and horribly outlandishly, you know, racist. So I appreciate Gloria's character. I'm happy she was able to like become a realtor and like do something that she wanted to do and not just be there for other people, be able to be there, you know, for herself. It wasn't throughout the entire show, definitely, because it's still a white sitcom. They can't let that happen. But they did it in the end, so I appreciate it. I, she really loves this family a lot, like a lot. Um, okay, so yeah. Gloria's relationship with Manny, I think it's cute. Is it a little, you know, yeah, it's cute, but it's all a little, you know, yeah, weird, but you know, I think Manny needed that. I'm sorry, the way Jay talked to Manny for most of the show was weird as hell as well. It was only, like, it took him a, it took him a while. I know it's new, it's a new marriage, new kid, everything, and Manny didn't like him for all good reason, for all good reason, of course. But, Gloria did her best. And Manny, he just ended up like that for multiple reasons. But you know, the show has ended now and we've all come back to a neutral place. Like a normal place, right? Right. That guy. Oh, oh my God! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mom! Oh, oh, this is such a dangerous intersection! 
Did I get lipstick on my face? No, you're fine. And consider yourself lucky you didn't just get, like, felt up by your... Okay, so that was the Pritchett's. Now we are finally at the Dunphy's. The first character I'm going to talk... Okay, there's stuff all over my hands. First thing I'm, character I'm going to talk about is Luke. I have no real opinion on... That's not true. You know, he's adorable for most of the show. And then he becomes an adult. And I can't call I can't call him adorable anymore. He's fine. His character becomes like it's it's fine. Like it's I have nothing I have no super strong opinions on Luke's character because like he is just there in the last couple of seasons, except to like steal Manny's girlfriend. <laughs> like that's that's what he does as a kid he's funny and I think I still think he's funny as an adult but I mean he's not as much he's not a kid anymore they all started making a lot of jokes at his expense again <laughs> especially in the last couple of episodes they went right back to what it was in the first season making jokes at his expense they kind of let his character meander which I don't mind actually don't for I don't force plot lines when it doesn't make any sense doesn't make any sense like Luke's as an adult is just what Luke if you were watching the first season and were like what do you think Luke was is like as an 18 or 19 year old you would describe what he's like in the last couple of seasons so I don't think them like I don't know they didn't they didn't really like they didn't really like do too much with him but what would they have done that would have made me interested next to nothing next to nothing and the, i'll talk about this literally in a second but they didn't do anything with his character development didn't do anything with anybody's character development in order to ruin a different character's development i'm getting to this in one second but i have really no strong opinions on luke as a character i think luke and manny's relationship like friendship is super cute and so funny i liked how they did that little parallel because i know in originally manny or luke was supposed to be like two years they were not supposed to be the same age like originally they're supposed to be one was supposed to be older i'm very happy that they made them the same age because that pair that was it was really cute and i was able to see how different they are because they're very 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 different i thought it was funny and i thought it was good sitcom humor next character is alex my sister my my sister my wow when yes Alex and then you know how I just I I now I'm angry because of how she is my sister and the way they just said no we don't care anymore we don't care anymore was what they said about Alex they gave up on her development to ruin Haley's character question mark we had one real conversation about Alex and about Alex's like life and like being inside Alex's head one episode it was with that therapist in that one single episode and that's it that's all we get we get no more as watchers and viewers of a show for like 11 seasons and after that we get Ruben Fiat oh I'm not I'm not talking about that and then so we don't hear anything about inside Alex's head we just see things happen to her for the rest of the show like now alex is like super smart and successful but we've just assumed that's happened based on what they have presented to us we didn't see that from alex like we saw her interview for that one job and we saw them all have shenanigans at her old apartment building like i love that episode that new episode in like season 11 i love that episode whenever a central location episode happens amanda is so happy because modern family does those so 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 well but back to my point we didn't see how she got there it's just it just happened alex just got successful and now she quit that job and is now gonna go with arvin to switzerland that's it no how no because we showed in that therapy episode she does struggle with stuff none of that was shown past that episode they're like this is what you get for all 11 seasons this is the only time you get to see alex as a human being and not as like i'm sassy <laughs> i'm snarky i apparently feel no human emotions blah 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 blah, blah. besides that point but like whatever Haley and dylan needed to have twins and jay needed to have a post 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 midlife crisis about dog beds that was definitely necessary to the plot 
that was definitely really integral and was more needed than telling us about Alex, who we've also seen for 10 years. And I know the kids are like the supporting character. I listen, specifics high, calm down. The adults are the main character of the show. I get that. I understand that, right? But no. Amanda doesn't buy it because you also, within the kids, treat them differently. Haley gets more. Joe gets more. But not everybody else. Little weird. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little weird, especially when Joe, the toddler, <laughs> gets more. But not that much because he's still, like, you know, a kid. More than Lily. That's really, that's really, really crazy to me. I love Alex's character. I like how they didn't have her stay at that, you know, hell hole company. Um, because, um, my, and then she went back on our campus and they're like, you're a sellout. And she was like, what is this? And I'm like, okay, yeah, call her a sellout so she can leave that place. So she can leave, so she can leave that place. And I'm happy she was able, like, she, that was when we saw like Alex back because I was like, okay, she's like super successful. She wears the high heels. She dresses like Haley now. Alex, we didn't see her get used to that, which she would have had to because of how we know Alex. We didn't see her get used to that. So obviously it was gonna crumble. Obviously it was gonna crumble and I'm very happy that it did because it was able to bring back Alex back for an episode and not like whoever this new person was that we supposed to just believe is Alex, I guess. And yeah. Cause it just happened. I don't know. It just happened. I'm like, how, how did we get to super successful Alex? We saw her, she had a college graduation episode and that was like it. I didn't like that. I didn't like that, me personally. Next character in the Dunphy home that I'm gonna talk about is Haley. I enjoy Haley's character. I do. It looked like Haley as a character was going to show a different side to the vapid, dumb, mean girl. Like when she got kicked out of school and was like forced to turn her life around or whatever. It seemed like it was going that way. And then in season eight, after they said that Andy was a was ridiculous, was not the correct choice, they started doing some really weird shit and just press rewind on a tape. I didn't like that. Her and her relationship, I, in my, this is my personal opinion. I think Andy is her best boyfriend. And then Arvin and then Dylan. I actually don't know about me putting Arvin above Dylan because she didn't like, I don't think she really liked Arvin. I think she just kind of liked what he represented for her. So whatever. I just don't understand why they have to always do the 360. I know they're, I understand they're mirroring Phil and Claire, even though I really don't personally see Phil and Dylan as all that similar, except in the fact that they're ridiculous. But they're, in my opinion, two different kinds of ridiculous. Phil and Dylan, Phil and, Phil and Dylan are two different types of ridiculous. They're not the same type of ridiculous, in my personal opinion. They're just creative and weird. They don't act like at all. It was just simply the parallel of their young adult lives, just comparing each other. And I'm gonna say that I think that was cheap and I was disappointed. I, they had my sister 9,000 months pregnant, propose, getting on one knee to propose. I hated that. I do enjoy Haley's character. I'm not her number one like stan or anything, but I was disappointed in how they just let her character fizzle into predictable tea. Like I thought we were the modern family. And here's my thing, I don't, as the show is ending now, I have no problem with how the show ended now. And I think Haley and Dylan are cute. I think their children are cute. I think Haley's gonna like, I'm, the show is over now. But I think the way it ended, it made me, I was not the most mad at the final result. I, after it all happened, I am not really that mad at the final result. Uh, but there was a different path for you guys to take. There was a different path for them to take and now we'll never know. Now we'll never know because there's so many things about Haley when they let her like be a person. <laughs> Haley was a really good sister and with people that she actually cared about and everyone else. But she fought with Alex and Luke day in and day out, but did things with them that only she could do. Scratching like um, the Alex Dumpy do me like on the bleachers, that's only something that Haley could do. No one else could have helped Alex in that situation. And they even had an episode about that when she was telling them that she's pregnant. There are things that only she can do for them. So I liked how they incorporate, because they had her like have trouble with the fact that she was gonna be a new mom and have trouble with the fact that she was gonna have to like take care of new independent beings from herself. I like that. So I'm not mad at where 
let me make that clear. I'm not mad at where Haley's character ended up. I'm just like, out of the past that you guys gave us, really? I get it, but do I? But do I is the real question. I don't. I do. But whatever. They're just so in a, in a different world. There would have been a different path for her. In a different world, there would have been such a different path for her, and I think it would have been better. But we're not in that world. I understand. Next character in the Dumpy household is Phil Up, or Phil. The greatest father on television. The greatest father on television. It's not close. And it's not even his fault because he could do the bare minimum and would probably still be the best dad on television because he don't hate his wife and kids like the rest of television. He doesn't hate his wife, he doesn't hate his kids, and he doesn't hate his job. He enjoys all three. That's crazy. That's crazy. At the start of the show, they had to make me make a lot more of those type of jokes. Like the, like, he, and it was it wasn't believable coming from him. Oh, I hate my wife, my kids, like just little things. It was literally always a joke from him though. And I didn't take it seriously because it was Phil. And as I've watched the show so many times, going back and watching him say those jokes, I'm like, hmm, they just had you saying anything, right? Not those first, those first seasons are really, really good. <laughs> but it's just, it's different. But as the show went on, I stopped having him say them for no reason. And it was such a breath of fresh air on television. He loves his job and his family. He doesn't wake up every day and do the whole the hates going to his job. He goes, he loves being a real estate agent. He loves his family. He does interesting and nice things for his family. He does creative things for his family. He wants his family to be happy and enjoy life and enjoy life. Phil deserves so much more than Jay's decaying ass. He should not treat you like that. He should not treat you like that. And he does ease up. Does Jay ease up? Yes, he does. But let's look at the timeline. Let's look at the timeline because for the entire time he's raising his grandkids, he's talking to him like that. He's flying planes into his face in like the third episode and then still re-gifting wine books in season 10. Like why do you act like that, Jay? Phil's never done anything wrong, ever. And I love him. It's not hard for him to be the best father on television, but he still is. Mm-hmm. I think Philip, I don't know why I keep calling him Philip. His name is Phil. I think what Ty is the actor's name was able to bring to that character is so was such, the show went on for a really long time, was so needed, if I should look at other TV shows that came out in 2010s, there is no, there, there is no father who likes his kids. It doesn't exist. They all resent them and resent their wives. One. Even in this, even in this show, they have them say certain stuff sometimes, and it's like, well, they all love their family, or they're supposed to. We'll get to the, who, which part of their family they really love when I talk about the show at the very end. I enjoy Phil. I love him as a dad. I love his character. I have nothing bad to ever say about Phil ever. And if you do, okay. Okay, deal with that on your own time. So that's Phil. Okay, last character that I want to talk about is Claire. Let me acquaint you. I like Claire. However, Claire is somebody, if she wasn't on this show, if Claire existed in a different show's universe, I would not like her. If she didn't exist, if I would have very serious beef with her. Um, but I like her. Let me explain. I think that makes sense. Me only liking Claire on the show, like if she was in any other universe, any work sitcom, any drama, boo, automatically horrible. Automatically horrible. Because Claire, I think Claire is funny. I think she's funny is an interesting word. Maybe not funny. I laugh at her. I think she does things because she cares. And sometimes she ends up doing the wrong thing and it's fine. Her relationship with her mom is why I can't really hate her because, um, could you imagine that, like, her mom's dead now, okay, but whatever. This woman, Claire is broken, 
constant trauma. So I can't, I'm, I'm not always mad at her, but then she does shit like, she failed at running for town council and then got handed a closet company. And then the episode where she was like, I'm finally a powerful white male in society and shit like that jerks you back to reality of like what Claire represents as a character and what demographic of people Claire represents as a character. Shit, when she says shit like that, I'm like, well, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say? The people around her are constant, like, it's constant chaos, which is why I said I don't fault Mitchell for being uptight and I don't fault Claire for having control issues. Look at the house she grew up in and the kids that she's raising. They do, they do anything. They do anything. They literally do anything. I really like how in the last season they had her leave what made her unhappy. They did the whole girl boss raising moms doing it all thing and they showed how absolutely difficult that was. I really loved that episode. How like Claire was at the very end was able to be fully vulnerable with Phil and be like yeah I can't do any of this. It's suffering. He didn't shame her. The he didn't shame her for it. The show didn't frame it in a shameful way. They sh kind of framed it as sort of like an empowering thing, and it was a sweet moment. And then later, having her leave the same job that like she had been like it, and showing that it's okay. Like you love something at once, and now you just like it. It's okay to have a change in heart and change in emotion, and to leave working through misery is not something that we should glorify. And that's kind of opposite that aspect. We don't see. It's usually the dad who goes to the job that he hates every day, the dad who goes to the job that he resents every day, and the mom who hates taking care of her kids. See, all of TikTok. That's usually the tropes we get. And with Phil and Claire, they said, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna show loving parents, even though serious control issues. We're gonna show people who like their jobs, but when they don't like their jobs, leaves. Now, she was the CEO of a closet company her, that her dad gave to her and was able to interview for like VP jobs and get a VP job at organizational company. She has a lot of privilege. But I like that. And for what, you know, the show represents, you don't see that a lot with like this demographic. Working through misery is glorified and loved and like adored. Putting yourself through hell. So those are my opinions on all of the characters. Now I'm gonna talk about the show in more of a general sense. I think there's a hair in my lip gloss. Yep, there is a hair in my lip gloss. Now we're a much more general sense and like common themes and stuff. So the first thing I wanna talk about is like when I'm in my opinion, I think the show gets bad. I don't think Modern Family gets unwatchable ever. I don't think it ever gets unwatchable. The last, I say five seasons. I'm not blaming Toddler Joe, but when t when the Joe that is the Joe for the rest of the show, when that um, little boy comes in, that's an easy descriptor of where the shift happens. I didn't talk about Joe. He's funny. He's very, very funny. That little kid is so funny. Um, that's all I would have said about Joe. I think he's hilarious. And he gets, you know, more time than Lily, who's been on the show for since episode one. But I digress. That's when I think the show started to plateau. That's the word I would use to describe Modern Family is plateau. Because I personally, when watching it, am never like, this episode was terrible. I'm never really like, this season was terrible. There are some times where I'm like, oh, brother. But it's not ever overarching and it's not ever a general consensus of the episode or the season. So, but I would say the plateau, where there, plateau, they're just gem episodes in seasons after season six and set after season six, I would say. Like the seasons, seasons one through six were excellent. Season seven to the end were good, but there were gem episodes that held up the whole season. Those seasons previously were being held up just by structure, foundational integrity. And then having Haley get back with Dylan. Let's just wrap it up. That's just when I said, oh, so we're, that's what we're doing. So that was just, that's a personal prep. Is that a personal preference from watching the show? I still think it was cheap. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Now, next thing I want to talk about is how the show kind of like represents American, we're talking about white America and I'll get to it's white America. Showed some, the show showed some really real moments, not too many where the show was like sad as shit because it's a comedy, but shit that is still necessary. Every once in a while there's a life lesson for the, not every once in a while, a lot. A life lesson for the kids or the parents. It's a common problem, but Modern Family doesn't do the whole exaggerated over the top situation like other sitcoms do. Everything that happened, 
ultra realistic, but not because we'll talk about how it's not ultra realistic. And I think the classic appeal of Modern Family is to audiences who can relate to it. You can answer, you can insert yourself right into this family. It doesn't feel awkward. It doesn't feel uncomfortable unless you're of color. But that aside, but right now, you can find someone in this family that you automatically connect with because they all are very general, tr like tropes. Each of them represent a very general person that you can potentially insert yourself in and now you've inserted yourself into this family and it doesn't feel like you're putting yourself in a situation that you would never be in if that is your case right the idea of a modern family the idea of three families connected in kind of weird ways is an interesting premise to a sitcom having so many characters has everyone watching able to connect at least one of them if again if you're in said demographic and even if you're not there's a character that usually will go through something. It's usually one thing that you probably have gone through. Having that many people on the show allows for so many different dynamics on the show. You're not forced to milk it out of three or four people and then what? That eventually gets dry and now you're fucked. With all of these characters, you can basically kind of just spin the wheel and if you get stuck with that, it'll, it'll work. And it defiantly, definitely helped that this cast had incredible chemistry since season one, since episode one it's believable real family real family all connected when you're watching the show from the jump it it feels like you watch it and you're like this is a real family don't know where these hairs keep coming from this is a real family right the drawback of having so many characters is that not every character gets their proper shine and of course that was bound to happen the adults are the main characters of the show the children are the supporting characters of course some characters got more than than others but modern family at, for at least the first five seasons was able to balance all the characters pretty well now that had to do with manny lily and luke being young and alex at that point being young and on, like she was just snarky quips until like the therapy episode so we're gonna throw out in there as well so they didn't have to focus on their younger characters as much or nearly at all except for when they needed cuteness snarkiness or sarcasm or all three but they interestingly didn't give all the children this now joe does that the three things i just named but joe is given a little bit more than lily is and it's weird it's weird we all know why it's weird and we all know why that happens but like, we know the answer to why that happened but the more time more lines than lily who's been on the show since episode one now once all three or four of them actually aged up now it's a little bit more awkward to just have lily come in for a one-liner and leave it's like wait you're not going to tell us anything about her life like she's 12 now she's not a toddler who can just come in and leave like she's she, she's an entire she's been an entire person this whole time we got to talk about how we see children but it does it makes less sense as she gets older she's just gonna walk in and bite at her dad's for like every episode for the three remaining seasons like that's it like that's all we're gonna get we got a first date episode finally in like season 12 was that season season 11 that's it every time anyone else just sees her she's just scary to them which is also racist and maybe this would be fine if they had to do this because they were giving us such they were spending so much time on a super specific attention detailing plot line with the adult characters but they were just replaying a tape with Haley and Dylan until the end of time so maybe not maybe not you know maybe not maybe not of course no way I can talk about modern family and not talk about racism. How would that be possible? I'm talking about a white I'm talking about a white sitcom. And that's about that doesn't make any sense. So I don't know why you clicked on this video but you thought this wasn't gonna happen. Watching a sitcom, a sitcom like this one that passes over a decade, it's really interesting to see like um how social how people think social climates has forced shows to try different humor not really i don't modern family like the cancel culture that republicans are talking about modern family had bigoted jokes in season one and in season 11. <laughs> what do you guys mean there were there were it was a lot worse in the beginning of the show yes but that didn't stop 
in the show, we have entire characters as walking stereotypes, especially in the show. Almost every single time anyone speaks to Gloria for like three seasons, they're being racist to her. Almost every single time they talk to her, it's something different. And at least they toned it down a little bit with Manny because he was a kid, but they really couldn't help themselves with it. And they really didn't help themselves when it came to Lily. The way Lily as a character is treated and the way she is vilified by her own family because she's quiet. They did this the whole time, but especially in the last like three seasons, they literally acted like Lily would wake up one day and murder them. And I'm like, that's racist? That's rate. What do you, what? What do you mean? And you're gonna be like, no, Lily's like snarky and mean. They acted afraid of her. That was a, that was a joke. That was a running joke. That her family is afraid of her. Whatever. There's no black people on the show. And for that, I'm grateful because I don't need. I'm not putting a black person in this environment. I'm not. I'd be like wishing for black people to be on Friends in that in, in that environment. No, even though that show makes actually less sense because it's set in New York City, with no black people being in the show and having the only people of color be in the family, Modern Family was able to present itself as this like they didn't talk about race except at certain points, which I'm going to talk about when that wouldn't make any sense. We know more, more than likely mo all of these people are racist and would be racist in different ways. We can use Alex, Luke, and Haley as three examples. <sighs> Luke would scream slurs in the back of class because he thinks it's funny. Alex, college admissions era racism. Haley, do you tape in your braids every day? Because they were like, we are going to merely ignore the fact that race exists, except when we want to make a racist joke about anyone in our family or whenever, like, want to do anything else. And believe me, they were still racist in this show, even though they didn't talk about race. They were still racist. Nobody called anyone a slur or anything, but sometimes they came pretty close. You had a show that didn't have to show, like, you had a show but didn't have to show the characters interacting with people who are different from them, which wouldn't be realistic. And which makes the show that ultra realism, how is that possible? How is that possible? But that part of the show is not supposed to be realistic. It is supposed to just show white media and what white people want you to see. So it's realistic in every sense. We all love each other, except we treat anyone in our family who isn't whites like a literal menace by either mocking their accents or making fun of how little we know about our daughter. We have episodes and one-liners about family members trying to get rid of their racist label. Jay's when he had to install those security cameras outside his house. Claire with the salt and pepper shaker being like, I'm not racist. Claire literally calling ice on Gloria and Manny. Anytime Cameron says anything about his hometown, see war of Northern aggression. We have all of that, but no black people. So, Show's a racist show. It's a white sitcom, so, duh. But yeah, nobody was called a slur, but it came really quite close because black people were there for that. Are there for that. You got black people for that episode, for the J security camera episode. You got his black friend to come, had all that. But, them being racist was not like a thing. That's not realistic. If you had all that happen, so they're racist. But no, <laughs> race, race relations, no, we're not gonna talk about it. Very interesting. Interesting is an interesting word for me to use. But that, does that make sense? Like, the show really didn't it's a white sitcom. It's a white sitcom about like an upper middle class white family. It's just the way, like, <sighs> Gloria, every time they spoke to her, 
for the first three seasons. It was something racist or like xenophobic. And then Lily, everything about the way they talk about Lily, the way they treat Lily, the way they act afraid of her, that's all so racist. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And it's weird how Modern Family is like, we are this ultra realistic family sitcom about a modern family, about a super chaotic modern family, yet we're not going to talk about race at all while being racist all the time. And we're only gonna bring it up when we want to have a scene about white people trying to show how not racist they are. Like it's a lot of nothing, right? Right. I say all that to say, it's Modern Family. <laughs> I've rewatched Modern Family 15 times in the past six months. So, yeah, <laughs> that's my, the, those, that's my final thoughts on bigoted jokes. It's not a very, it's not, but it's Modern Family. I'm not really watching it for that, but it's something that I can talk about. Cause then people are like, I, I, I'm not, I know that. I know that. I can still talk about it though, because this show is supposed to represent American culture from 2010 to 2020 or 2009 to 2020. So I should, we should talk about it. No matter how many times I watch it, no matter how much I love the show, we, and there, like, you could go through every episode and just critically analyze it from a race perspective. And you could, there would be ammunition for it there. Because I just named you some of the shit. I can't sit here and name everything. That would be an entirely different 45 minute video. Those are my thoughts on Modern Family. I, Modern Family is my favorite white sitcom. I don't, I haven't, okay, I've watched, I think, no, I haven't watched every single white sitcom ever and I don't really, I, there's some that I just won't ever see because they don't look very, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that 70s show does not look very interesting to me, Gilmore Girls does not look very interesting to me, maybe my mind will change. White people will never be this funny again. I said all that, white people will never be this funny again. I don't, I don't think you guys will ever get this humor again. I don't think you guys will ever have what it is, what, and it's not even humor, it's cast chemistry. You guys have snuffed out cast chemistry in movies especially, but also TV shows. I don't think this can be topped. Unless you guys wanna bring back chemistry on set, this cannot be topped. You will never top this. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, I don't. What show hits like this for 11 seasons? And yeah, the plateau happened, but I'm sorry. There are still gem episodes, even 11 seasons in. Even though you don't like where the characters are, you don't like where they ended up, believe me, I don't like the characters, I don't like where they ended up, it's still funny. But those episodes make me mad again. Like that episode in Alex's like super fancy apartment. I loved that. I love that episode so, so much. And then I got mad all over again. Because I'm like, y'all can still do this. Why the plateau? Why, why, why just pre pressing rewind on a tape? For Haley and Dylan, why? We couldn't even have them get to back together and do something different. Or any, it could have been, it could have been different. Now, I'm not a television show writer, not a film major, so I don't know. But someone who is could tell you otherwise, could tell you a good solution. I don't believe Modern Family ever gets unwatchable. I think they kept the last seasons that people say it plateaus at. I think they kept it as exciting as possible. They brought in a lot of new shit to keep it exciting, a lot of new stuff. But they were able to keep the entire cast there for 11 seasons and the chemistry never went away. And that's what kept the show so good. No one from the core cast left, no one faltered. It was always there, everyone was always there. And that's what makes the show so excellent. So yeah, you see how I talk a lot of shit? You can talk a lot of shit about shit that you like because you can't. Do you really like things if you can't critically talk about them? Not even critically, because I just rant. Did you watch the show? Do you actually like the show? No! So yeah, those are my thoughts on Modern Family. Um, white people are never talking this again. 
I said everything I just said, yeah, white people are never topping this again. I don't believe so. This is mine. This is my sitcom. This is a my comfort show. So am I biased? Yes. Absolutely. Ab no, unequivocally, I am biased. But I'm also right. Because what is your rebuttal to my question? It's not my only rebuttal would be how I met your mother, not including the last season. But that last season is still there. So that's not the answer. I'm right. So yeah, I know a lot of people love Modern Family. So I'm very, very, very excited to see what people's thoughts are on individual characters. Because we don't have Modern Family, at least on my time, we don't have Modern Family discourse all that often. So I don't really know. My favorite character is Alex. My mm, my favorite adult character is I Gloria. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Gloria is not in your top 3? What do you mean? What show are you watching? That's what I'm confused about, but I'm joking. You can like whoever you like. I'm joking. Disclaimers, you know? But yeah, let me know who your favorite characters on this show, on this show are. Let me know, I guess, I don't know if you have any modern family unpopular opinions. If you do, I would love to read them. Again, I have watched this show 15 times. So if you want to talk to somebody on Modern Family, talk to me about Modern Family in the comments. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So yeah, I'm putting more lip gloss on to go wipe this makeup off, but Lip gloss is a lifestyle. It's not a makeup product. It's a lifestyle. So that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching another installment of the Everything Wrong with Blank series. Today's was Modern Family. If you go, would like to go watch more, they're all pretty much like this format. I've done, I've named all the shows I've done it before. They're all pretty much this format, me getting on camera and talking with the characters and like relating it to some general things at the end. Some are a little bit more organized than others. <sighs> Everything wrong with is just vibes. All right. It's just vibes. And I talk about a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk about because you know, when you watch shows over and over again, you start having conversations with yourself. You can't have them with yourself forever. That's why I made my victorious one because I was like, I can't keep just talking to myself. I watch, I rewatch victorious a lot. And I was like, I can't just keep talking to myself about this forever. I have to get it out there. And that's why I made the first video. That's what I do with all of these. So this is still the, the outro, Amanda. It's been like three minutes. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to follow me on social media, here's my Twitter and my Instagram. Go have fun. Enjoy yourself on there if you would like to. And yeah, check out some of the other Everything Wrong with Blank series and let me know what your thoughts are on Modern Family, what your favorite characters are, your favorite seasons. Because um, there's some debate on that. I think you guys do too much with the later seasons. They're not that bad. They're not that bad. I think you guys do a little bit too much. I think, it, I think it's a little much. I'm sorry. Uh, does it get, is it not, it's not as good as the first five. That first five, please, please. It's not as good as the first five. But I think you guys do a lot. I don't think there was a steep decline in Modern Family. I think it was just plateau and poor character choices. That's my final end. That's, I'm done. I'm done. So yeah, thank you guys so very much for watching. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.